Welcome everybody to this Rad Pod Breaker. We are so honored to be joined by our friend Lucy Tomanova, and she is coming to us all the way from the Czech Republic from Prague. Is that correct? Did I get that right? Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi, yeah. everybody. Oh. <laughs> so glad you're here. So we brought Lucy in to meet with our viewers and our friends because she is a journalist and she also instructs on uh, disinformation and how to recognize it and how to inoculate yourself against it. And Lucy, can you tell us a little bit about why it's so important uh, to be educating people about the ravages of disinformation? Well, I think um, it's very important uh, and uh, we see it uh, now. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a pity that we didn't see it uh, a long time before, because um, uh, the propaganda from Russia was uh, becoming very intensive and very strong about 2014. And uh, uh, we in Czech Republic are in the center of Europe and we are just something like a Russian communication hub for the other parts of Europe, from, uh, for the whole world. And we were like really infiltrated by Russian agents. And uh, now we are in the first line of hybrid war and we have to defend us uh, ourselves because uh, we are losing. We are losing well, now. Yes, and we, we talk about this a lot on our show, how we may be finally mobilizing as a population to vote democratically and to understand the danger we're in, but we continually lose the information war. Like every day, there's another example of that. And when you say 2014, that is a year that's very important to us on the show because that's the year that Russia invaded Ukraine and acted like it didn't and used information warfare to confuse people to what was really going on. And we should have been prepared in America in 2016 when we were a target nation of information warfare and we weren't. And over and over and over again, these patterns are repeating. And I think it's so important people understand that this is a global attack. This is what I call a rolling insurrection where all Western nations, it, it, any nation embracing democracy or a liberal democracy uh, ethic is under attack. And why do you think 2014 was kind of the year where it started to really ramp up in your country? I think uh, because it was uh, the beginning of the war, the beginning of Russian expansion, because they uh, just invaded Crimea and, and they wanted to like uh, legitimate it. And they uh, like started the war in Ukraine on Donbass. But uh, they were always saying that it's not a war, it's just, I don't know, a public war. Or, you know, it's, it was like an official war. And mm -hmm. now, it's just open. I know. And um, Hi-Fi, why don't you jump in? Because I've got a bunch of questions I want to fire off, but you go next. Uh, one of the things I'm noticing uh, across Europe and, and elsewhere around the world uh, is that Russia is using disinformation to push right-wing candidates, uh, right-wing candidates that align with Putin's homophobia, uh, his anti-Semitism, his white supremacy, um, his religious extremism, uh, which for Putin is really just a front. He's not a religious person, but people who are religious extremists are easily sucked in uh, to his movement. And, and I think the closest example to you uh, is the fellow who was just elected in Slovakia, uh, Fajco, right? Um, what can you tell me about how disinformation was used to promote him? Well, Fitzo is uh, is a populist, 
And uh, what we can see there is just the rise of uh, populist fascism. Uh, Fitzo is uh, a populist and an opportunist. He's not like, uh, uh, he's uh, not a religious person. He's uh, not a fascist, maybe. He's just uh, like, uh, he really needs uh, to get uh, immunity for the people from his like mafia. Um, because there are about like 20 people who are who are accused of corruption and um, other crimes because uh, Fitzos regime was uh, connected to Hungarian and um, Balkanian and Italian mafia and Russia so he had to leave his position after the murder of Jan Kuciak and his girlfriend. He was a journalist. And Fitzo had to leave his post. And then there was uh, another another guy, what, uh, and, uh, what uh, another party, Matovic. He was uh, like, looked like democratic. Uh, Democratic Party, but he was just crazy, psychopath. So Fitzo is back now. Yeah, and that's uh, really a bad situation because those people, those about 20 people from his like mafia or the government mafia will not be punished. And uh, they are now, you know, they gained immunity and nothing is going to happen. It's, um, it, it, it's it's shocking to me because we hear this story over and over and over again. And yeah. as Hi-Fi pointed out, 10 years ago, uh, the world's countries, half of the countries were authoritarian. 10 years later, it's now 72%. So we see this trending in the wrong direction. And I just asked uh, America's foremost scholar on Italian fascism, Ruth ben Ghiat, um, about why criminals in America who helped plot the insurrection, such as Steve Bannon, Mike Flynn, Roger Stone, have not been incarcerated. And it's something that also keeps her up at night. She doesn't know why, but what she said was so important. She said, they're not just criminals whose associates have already been convicted for sedition against the United States. They are having global global impacts. And we think about somebody like Steve Bannon and his influence in other countries. And can you speak a little bit about that? Because I think you have seen the networks he's involved in uh, harming people in the Czech Republic, harming people online who start to become more radicalized. So I think Ruth is right. I think he represents global threats. Uh, so Steve Bannon is connected to a uh, big web of uh, organizations like Catholic and right wing uh, to European network. And some of those nonprofit organizations are quite powerful. Some of those people even, you know, they, uh, they are advisors of ministers of like important people. And it's becoming a big problem in Slovakia, in Czech Republic, in Poland. Also, there's Ordo Luris. It's a very powerful Catholic organization that is against abortions and like really, really, really extreme. And they are connected uh, to Italian fascist uh, organizations, to Hungarians. And, you know, Hungary is like uh, really like traditional fascist uh, state yeah. now with the uh, charismatic leader um, and, you know, Viktor Orban. And he's yes. quite, he's uh, like quite charismatic. He's a very good speaker. And uh, Fitzo in Slovakia is uh, like just copying his model. Wow. Is, uh, Slovakia is becoming a second Hungary and Hungary is a Russian proxy uh, it's a base for Russian spies and Slovakia is becoming the same now 
it's funny we we hear we you know we hear this stuff and we're just like you know we I, I think about Trump in the White House and his third wife with him and what she represented and I just you know we keep on seeing this pattern over and over again and we just interviewed our friend um, Zarina Zabriskie in Kherson one of only two reporters there actually on the ground reporting about the genocide occurring in darkness. And she described it as feeling like being hunted because of the attacks and the war that is occurring there, the specific attacks and the drones. And it, it threw me and I shared with her that it was, her, it was so devastating for me to hear what she was describing. And she says, you guys are being hunted in an invisible war. The work that we do uh, has us being stalked all the time, uh, but people don't see it because it's mostly online. And as somebody who has experienced the harms of the quote unquote invisible war, can you share with our audience how important it is that people start to wake up that there are no rear areas in an information war and that we all are targeted in various ways or family members are targeted. And how do we wake people up to the fact that it's occurring globally and nobody's immune to it? We are all, we are all dealing with this horrible, invisible war. Yeah, it's uh, about um, IRS and analysis of uh... Uh, the Russian propaganda and disinformation, and it's about for, uh, 25 narratives that can alternate. It's uh, it's like, you know, we use, or as a propaganda, propagandist, you can use those 25 narratives uh, as you wish. Uh, you can uh, tell the story about uh, immigrants coming and take your homes, about uh, you know, um, bad and like really devastating West and traditional East, about religious East, about uh, traditional values, you know, about LGBT crazy West and like this. And many people are in it, uh, inoculated um, through social networks mainly through Facebook. And yes, the indoctrinating is coming through the through the what's known as social media platforms, but HiFi will say anti-social media platforms because they are um they're harming people at scale. It's like it's like nicotine and you know all the bad things all over again. And it's interesting, HiFi, she was rattling off narratives that are exactly what's being deployed right now in real time as we see Putin's GOP head to the border and warn us about the you know criminal immigrants and it's just it's 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 sh shocking to me that more people are not aware of exactly what Lucy is saying well in our country it's uh, now like uh, you know there are some people who are like the fifth colon of Russia who are really paid for it or are, I just are just uh, no useful idiots yeah, because know. they they like it or, or they hate the society and they don't want democracy but there's a lot of people who are just uh, you know unhappy or in executions there are many people in executions they have no money no future so uh, the propaganda this information targets those people very well and also there are many people who are old or like vulnerable or traumatized and they're scared so there yeah, are a those emails uh, full of hoax and uh, yeah, Facebook and uh, people also, you know, uh, there was a like big flow of disinformation through hunger, uh, from Hungary, through Hungarian minority in Slovakia to Slovakia. 
hi so it was just like yes I, I i've got something else i want to ask but hi if i jump in so um one of the things we know uh from brexit and uh from the 2016 election of trump is that people were micro targeted specifically uh on facebook yeah. we know that Cambridge Analytica scraped data uh, from Facebook, and that was used to target, uh, you know, people with financial problems, people with relationship problems, uh, people exhibiting any sort of neurotic behavior uh, anywhere on the autism spectrum, et cetera. Uh, have yeah. you seen that type of practice in your country as well? Well, I think in our country, it's not that sophisticated because uh, you don't need it. it uh, you can do it, but uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just uh, that simple that uh, you can touch those, those people like directly, more directly. But yeah, there are definitely uh, troll farms and many trolls and botnets on Facebook, on Twitter. So, and you can spot them. I just spotted uh, a Russian troll in Roblox game. It's an online platform for children playing games. Wow. And there was a Russian troll who made uh, a game. He twisted the game. Um, one of the games uh, that is called Pick a Side. Uh, so he paid uh, for it to be Russia against Ukraine. And then he had some, you know, like bot accounts to join him to his side to Russia. And he was trolling the other players, um, uh, my son too. And my son started to discuss with him. And they were uh, like, you know, ha having an argument. And then they just wanted to ban each other but to report each other to admin but my son was 10 year old was banned because those bots reported him i'm just i'm i'm sitting here hi-fi just like i mean well you know i, you know, I, I have two well, young yeah. sons and, and they play roblox and i've had to explain to them that you know there are white supremacists and racists who yeah. are recruiting on Roblox. There are Russians who are trolling and recruiting on Roblox. Um, and this is a game for children, right? And yet uh, legislatures, at least in, in, in America, I don't know, is it the same in your country? There are no laws against regulating. You know, no one's even talking about it. It's not even on their radar. Uh, do you see the same or no? I see the same. Uh, you know, Minecraft, uh, the game Minecraft, it's quite mm -hmm. safe. The admins really work there and it really functions. But Roblox is free and it's not a game, it's a platform. And uh, it's unregulated. It's like really, uh, I think it's uh, important to push those uh, owners of the platforms to regulate this because it's very, very dangerous. It's the same... Yes. When children spend time on TikTok, it's yeah. like uh, you know I work uh, for um, a nonprofit organization. Uh, it's called AI for Children, and, and uh, we want to make a curriculum um, in the same way that South Korea has about using. Um, about using artificial intelligence in education and about educating people, uh, mostly uh, teachers and children, uh, how to safely use AI, how to understand those algorithms. Because uh, either you use the technology or the technology uses you. That's right. That's right. Either you use the technology or the technology uses you. That's incredible. And often if it's free, you're the product. So you were just kind of uh, addressing that as well. Um, thank you for that. It's all very important. We have a friend named Pekka Kaliomeni who does the Votnik soup 
uh, website, botniksoup.com, where he shows the Russian propagandists cloaked as patriotic military men or politicians or bloggers. Uh, and um, he's from Finland. And they start inoculating their children against disinformation and against propaganda already in preschool. They don't wait until it's too late. And in America, we talk about this a lot, our freedoms, which we cherish, are being weaponized against us by countries like Russia that don't have freedom or the, or the you know, uh, other fossil fuel countries that have interests in keeping, you know, dominating America. And it's just, it's coming through our minds right now. We talk a lot about the fact that our minds are being targeted and hacked at scale. And we continue to lose people because we're not even acknowledging that we are under attack. And it seems to me that you guys being closer to the source and closer to Russia have a fighting chance of getting the word to your people that you're under attack. And I believe they tried to attack one of your leaders with hybrid warfare and the people were aware of it. Can you address that a little bit? Alex Alvarova, our, our mutual friend, uh, mentioned something about that. About uh, targeting people in our country? Well, about also trying to influence the outcome of your own elections. Yeah. That's true. Uh, there, there was uh, a huge support to, uh, you know, those uh, non-democratic parties, and uh, I think, like really, really, a systematic destruction of a party that was called Pirate Party. Uh, that is quite liberal, like. Uh, very openly liberal, and the party was destroyed. And uh, in the elections, I think uh, by trolls, botnets, and like this. Wow. And uh, so they wow. they lose. Wow. And and the other parties were quite happy about it, but it's like really stupid because they can be next, and they will be next because uh, our, our government, uh, which is uh, made from like five parties together, the coalition of five, mm -hmm. they are like not very good uh, at communication. Uh, they are failing at strategic, strategic communication with people. Wow. They are really bad at it. So at the next election, uh, there can there can be even a bigger influence from Russia, and uh, I think that people will uh, become like tired of the war in Ukraine, and Russia is planning to uh, you know uh, to have uh, a long war, and. Uh, so uh, so uh, the people become like exhausted and then uh, they will support uh, anti-democratic uh, parties in US elections and uh, also support Andrei Babish and our ex prime minister in the other elections in Czech Republic. Wow. wow. Um, last thing I wanted to mention to you, Alex Alvarova, our mutual friend, um, and Joseph Holy were on our show. They do the Canaries in the Net podcast. And she said that growing up, um, she also is from, you know, uh, Czech Republic. And she, yeah. she grew up, she said, under Soviet rules still, and things then change later in her lifetime. But she said it was like being sick a little bit in the head because in her house, she could say one thing, but she knew as soon as she went outside, she had to act a different way. And I feel like that sickness has been coming to our country. It's already taking root 
And what's your best advice of somebody who's had to be on the front lines of this to Americans and to others on how to not let that sickness take root, how to fight it before it actually is allowed to destroy our country and our democracy? I think we have to educate our children. Yeah. And I think it's it's very important not to lose connection, like personal connections with each other. And even with those who are like really sick in their heads, yeah. because, uh, you know, uh, it's like in our cult, uh, the cult or the propaganda wants that wants uh, you to lose the connection with your relatives so yeah. you have to keep the connection but um you know you have to have your own borders like, Boundary. and the discussion yeah. just uh, just to help the person if it's your grandma or your brother just help the person um show some care but don't discuss uh, this information, don't discuss propaganda, just uh, leave it alone, don't push it. And yes. <laughs> that's it, because you can never win. It's an no. uh, emotional hack. So Emotional this, this hack. Program. Oh my God, there it is, our discussing emotional hack with Lucy. With Lucy. This was perfect. Discussing how mm. the how, how to navigate the emotional hack. That's exactly right. Anytime we talk about this, anytime we try to bring sensibility to a conversation where someone's been radicalized, they have that cognitive dissonance where they just recoil because they've been emotionally hacked. Thank you for giving us the gift of that phrase. Hi-Fi, any final thoughts or questions? Let's keep fighting the good fight. And Lucy, final words to our viewers. Well, uh... There's another possibility how to help your government. Uh, it's a model that was made in Baltic states that are really good uh, in protecting themselves in the hybrid war. They have elks who beat trolls on social network. In uh, Baltic states, uh, it's connected uh, very narrowly with uh, the army. In our country, in in Czechia, uh, there are Czech elves, and you can join them. When you are from Czech Republic, you can join them as a volunteer and help uh, with cybersecurity. You can help to monitor propaganda, disinformation uh, on webs, on uh, you know social networks. You can help. And I know some people who are elves. Elves, I love it. This is something I've been begging our our president to do. We need a New Deal level, uh, you know, core like a Peace Corps that fights disinformation and helps people. I love that. I want to be an elf. I want to be helpful. We've been doing it on the front lines. I have for seven years as a volunteer, and uh, it's time to put some. Or, or, you know, some sort of a structure to it and allow people to really just, you know, protect the minds of citizens by keeping this poison out. The poison, Putin has invaded our country in three million different ways. That's a great quote I got from my friend Olga Lautman, if not more. And yet people still don't see it. But if you actually have elves looking out and you can turn off the poison, that would be one way to at least begin um, getting our people back from the emotional hacks. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Lucy Tomanova, and keep, as Hi-Fi said, fighting the good fight in your own country. And thank you for taking time this morning to help my country. It means so much to me. Good luck to us all.